Hey guys, Steve and Eric here from Top Guns out of Terre Haute, Indiana. Eric, we get a lot of questions about light placement on a mm -hmm. rifle, yep. what type of light, uh, how yep. bright should it be, and positioning, cap versus no cap, pressure sure. switch versus no pressure switch. Yep. What are some of the options you've seen in dealing with lights on rifles, and what, what one do you like? Uh, personally, I, I keep a smaller light on my gun. Uh, I like what's called a tail cap switch on my guns. Okay. I always mount my light on the left side of my forearm. Mm -hmm. I'm a right-handed shooter, so that way I can easily manipulate on and off with my, okay. my weak hand thumb. It works well for me. All right, now now you like it on uh, on the side because because of the fact that you're going to be operating it the the tail cap the tail cap correct. Now there are some folks that say, hey, I want a pressure switch, mm -hmm. uh, which is basically something that looks like this that tethers in there, connects, and in which case, if that were the case, chances are that is going to go over on your strong side of the rifle so that where your yeah. weak hand is, you can operate your pressure you're, switch. You're going to run want to run your tape switch. With, with probably these two fingers. That way you, you're, you're gripped around the forehand of your gun and it's easy mani manipulated with these two fingers. Okay, so now let's talk about, um, we've got a guy here that, that always mounts it on top. Mm -hmm. For the so, shadow, I assume. Right, so, so his argument is when it's on the left side or the right side, you're casting a shadow the opposite direction. Right. Uh, and so he likes to mount it on top so the shadow is always down mm -hmm. and he has equal disbursement of light. Sure. What are your thoughts on that? You know. It, it all gets down to the individual. Your gear is your gear. Uh, at the end of the day, you're going to set up your rifle the way you want it. With the, the mount on the top, you're still able to run the tail switch, how, or the, the tape switch, excuse me, but you're still you're going to have to adjust your grip a little bit to bring your thumb over the top of the forend mm -hmm. to engage the tail cap switch, which that's a technique that's widely taught today. Okay. So uh, I think the main thing here, the main takeaway, for me anyway, is is at the end of the day, everybody has to do what works best for them. But I think yep. mainly is that we need to be sure that we train with yep. whatever system it is that we, we decide to go with. And I would say the other argument I would have is try to stay, stay consistent uh, from platform to platform. So if you have five ARs, I would recommend whatever system or whichever direction you mm -hmm. go, I would try to stay consistent with those so that that muscle memory is built up from platform to platform. I, I agree 100%. Once again, you know, your gear is your gear. And it's just amazing to me how far lights have come in the last 30 years. You see- 30 years. 30 years. <laughs> they I'm, were using candles when he was a kid, so <laughs> they were. go ahead. I'm sure you remember as I do, the, the pictures of the British SAS yeah. during the, the Iran uh, embassy takedown, yep. they had big mag flashlights on top of those MP5s. Yeah. And they didn't put out one fifth the light of this little guy right here. Yeah. It's amazing. Oh, I know. It is, it is incredible. Yeah. All right. So now let's, while we're on, while, we'll do a whole nother video on this, but while we're on that subject, you said you use a smaller light. You mean physically smaller light. I do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, lumens wise, how many lumens do you like on your rifle? And are you looking for a long throw versus a short throw? And let's explain what a long throw and a short throw is. So um, I'll explain that part and then you tell me how many lumens you're looking for. So a long throw is gonna have a longer cone on it. And if you just look down into your light, you're gonna find that the where the LED is, you're gonna have a, lar or a longer cone and that's gonna give you a longer throw so that your beam is more pointed. I've seen where I can, out of a 200 lumen light, I can get better throw out of it than a thousand lumen light mm -hmm. sometimes because it is because of the shape of that cone mm -hmm. and I'm able to shine down at 50 to 100 yards whereas a thousand lumen light if it doesn't have the right cone on it you may get a lot of brightness it but it's, it's very dispersed right. and so you're not getting the throw on it mm -hmm. so I think it, part of it depends on is this a house gun or is this a gun that's in a vehicle that you might pull out and actually uh, especially for law enforcement you might engage at a little bit further distance sure. are you out in the country right. and so what distance do you need to to be throwing this light. The other thing that I think that comes into play is if, if it's in a house, uh, you need to be worried about that, about that backwash, the backsplash of light so that if your pupils are dilated and you've got a bright light, too bright, now you've right. actually blinded yourself because your pupils are dilated, you're putting too much light in there, and you've done the same thing to yourself that you were hoping to do to, to uh, a potential threat. Right, the other thing we see, Steve, is overuse of a light, especially indoors. People will kick that light on when we do room clearing classes here, for example. Uh, we shut the lights off during a portion of that class. And we'll see people overusing that light. They, you have to understand, if that light's on, you're giving your position away. So my advice is use a light sparingly if you have it on, mounted on a weapon. Okay. Uh, how many lumens are you typically going with if you're on a, on a, be it a rifle or a handgun? 
if you think it's something you're more likely going to use indoors? You know, I, I stick around the 500 lumen range. Uh, okay. that, that doesn't give me that big backwash like you were talking about because, okay. you know, on a, a white painted wall, for yeah. example, you're going to get a lot of light kick back at you. Sure. That, that doesn't give me that blinding effect that I would have on some of the bigger stuff. And I've seen I've seen people recommend anywhere from anywhere from as low as 200 for indoors sure. up to about yep. that 500. You know, to, to kind of build on what you just said, uh, one of my lights that I keep in my home, I keep a red lens on it or a, a filter, if you will. Mm -hmm. That way I, I don't get that that backwash back. I, I'm still able to light my adversary and I don't get the backwash off of that wall. Okay. So that, that red lens cover it's got its place all right now uh when we're dealing with something outdoors mm -hmm. now i think i think we all agree brighter is probably better the bigger and, the better and the longer throw you can get is yep. probably yep. better as you well. know for example it, it does kind of bleed over a little bit uh my the rifle that i coyote hunt with i have a light on it and it is extremely long range light i can light up a, a coyote out at 200 yards with that mm -hmm. so you know for an out, a truck gun for example if law enforcement out working outdoors midwest if you will uh Good example. You may be, need to light that subject up out at 100 or 200 meters. Yeah. All right, guys. If you have questions down below or if you have anything productive to add or if we've said something wrong, please don't hesitate to post down below. Uh, please like, share, subscribe, do all the fancy little things that we uh, need you to do to help us grow our channels. Anything else? Can't think of a thing. All right. Thanks, guys. Take care. See you.